demonstration from Monday night's class, the second class. And uh, just to review, the first night what we did is, um, you know, we're throwing bottles and we're getting back to basics. So I wanted to focus on the cylinder and uh, just creating a nice gentle form and then also getting experience throwing the neck um, separately. So we threw the neck off the hump and then later we put those two pieces together. Um, so the second night what we're doing is we're throwing more of a, a vase form and the reason for that is one of the more common questions is how can I uh, reserve the right amount of clay for the neck you know I'm throwing the body I get to the top and I run out of clay so if we uh, do this exercise where we're throwing a cylinder and we're creating kind of a, a vessel or a bottle form uh, the body portion and we leave enough clay at the top for a, a vase uh, to turn it into a vase um, then the next step would be taking that top that we turned into the top of the vase and actually using that clay to make the neck so it's just kind of a way to to set your uh, way of thinking up to uh, reserve enough clay for the very top so I've already centered this clay so we I'm not um, wasting your time <clears throat> going through that. If you want to review my centering techniques, um, there's a video on my YouTube channel that talks specifically about um, the centering process and that was the first step of last week's demonstration. So I, I wanted to get this far. So the clay's been centered. I've checked the side for center and it looks pretty good. Now I'm going to open up the clay and I talked about how I support the side of the clay with this hand and as I'm opening it, this up and pulling the clay out creating the floor I'm pushing up against my hand which is already trying to redirect some of the clay that normally gets stuck here at the bottom up into the wall. So we'll do that real quick. I'm just pushing down into the center here and I like to have about a half an inch of clay in the bottom uh, for trimming a nice foot ring at the end. Okay, so here we go. I opened it. Now I'm going to compress that floor. And I, I already know that it's the thickness I really I want it to be, but even if you feel pretty confident about that, you should always use your little needle tool just to poke it in here and check it. So that's about a half an inch of clay, and that's a lot of clay, but if you think about trimming a nice deep foot ring, you want a, a nice um, floor. floor to the piece so it's not, not weak and you don't want to trim through the bottom. So I also, if I poked a hole in the bottom, which I just did, I like to push a little clay into the center to seal that. If we're making a base, we want to make sure that there's no hole or any kind of uh, way for the water that might be inside to get through the piece. So we seal that up. Now the next thing I want to talk about is I've floored, you know, compressed the floor and I'm going to compress this wall or recenter this outside ring. And I do that by just applying a little bit of moisture there and I'm going to press down with this part of my finger and I've got this other finger wrapped around here and then I'm going to pinch this clay on the side and this whole step it, it does kind of thin out the wall but it's also just taking the time to recenter this clay on the side so you just kind of pinch it and do not come up until it feels centered the whole time you can see that that one finger is really compressing the top if you do this and you do it well I promise that your first pull is going to be really nice. Um, used to be, before I did this, when I would do my first pull, there's a lot of uncentered clay down here and every time I would pull the top would start wobbling. So that's one of the ways you can avoid that. So I'm going to do my first pull. I'm going to undercut this. Actually I skipped a step. Uh, 
I usually, even though I've done that recentering, there's always still a little clay down here at the bottom. So what I do is I, I try to move that clay up into the wall. I don't know if you've ever had the experience where your first pull or maybe even your second pull, you shear off a whole ring of clay. That's because you're pulling too much at one time. If we can redistribute some of that clay that's stuck at the bottom into the wall, you can avoid that. And what happens is as you're pulling it up, um, the clay folds over itself and it can't reattach to the, the clay and be reincorporated with the wall. And so it just peels off. All right, so I'm going to get ready for my first pull, sorry. And make a groove down here at the bottom. And then you can, I use a thumb pull. You can use a knuckle pull, a finger pull, but you just want to establish that it's a little undercut to help you get under that clay. And then you're going to pull, that's why they call it a pull. You're going to pull that clay up into the wall and uh, make it thinner and taller. So I like my thumb pull. Go right up to the rim. And never over the rim, but right up to the top and then release. In between each pull, I like to compress the rim. Uh, I usually do something that looks like this. But um, you can do this, which is putting most of your hand inside and just your little finger on the outside. And this kind of, it compresses and it also kind of evens out that top portion right about here. Just by, with a little compression with your finger and a downward press with your hand. So that's a really nice way to compress the top. Now I'm going to um, do my next pull. Do an undercut again. And remember the inside hand is in here making sure that when I push this clay in to make that groove, it's not simply just pushing that inside floor making it narrower and narrower. So uh, got my groove here. Put my thumb in there. And then I'm just going to very slowly go to the top. And I've got my eye on the bottom. Since I'm making this thinner, I might have some problems with uh, buckling or torquing or twisting. And then I usually, in my second pull, get about this high and it starts to fight me. Instead of fighting the clay, I just collar that in at the top and continue that pull. And I don't always go back to the thumb pull, but you can see how that makes that much easier. All right, so that's two pulls, and that's really my basic cylinder. And if you look at the inside, you can see there's a little water in there, and there's some uneven wall you know, uh, action going on in there. So this next step, I'm going to use my square rib. This is probably, I meant to uh, mention this before I get started. If you look over here next to me, I don't always do this, but if you do this, it's going to make throwing a lot easier. I've cleaned off all my tools, relatively clean, and then I've organized them by, you know, ribs and then throwing sticks and uh, needles and sponges and trimming tools. They're kind of in the order in which I will need them, and they're just all laid out normally, as you know, by watching one of my demonstrations in class. I just have them all piled in a bucket, <laughs> you know, and um, that's nothing wrong with that either. It's just that this just makes it a lot easier. So I know I need this square rib, and it's just right there. So the first step is removing this little apron here. This is a little extra clay that I won't be able to pull up into the pot. So I'm just going to get rid of it right away. And then I'm going to, and that gives you the little crumbs, put a little bit of water on the wall and on my hand. And I'm just going to go clear down to the bottom. And all I'm trying to do is even out this cylinder and compress the wall. I might flare it a little bit. 
you go right here, especially on the inside, I know there's an irregularity, so I'm trying to even that out and compress it at the same time. Okay, so I will do that for the whole cylinder. And I try at this point, I try to keep this relatively dry on the outside. All right, so now I've got the cylinder and I'm just going to push it into shape. And you're going to see right here is where we're going to, we're turning this into a vase. So I want a nice belly for the, the body of the piece. And then I'm going to reserve that much space for the spout or the top of the vase. And this is kind of what you would do for a bottle. That's kind of uh, where we're headed with this whole um, several week session. All right, so I'm going to go to the bottom again, and I'm going to give it just a little bit of shape. But notice the rib is not moving. Just my hand on the inside. Now I get to the top of the rib, and I can lift the rib at the bottom away from the piece. And my goal, so I've set this line here. My goal is to compress it right up to that line. And so I, I change the angle of this rib and I bring it into that line. So this is what, what you would do for a bottle also. You're saying, all right, from this point forward, I'm not gonna go past that. I'm gonna just shape this piece right here. All right, so now that I've opened the piece up, I can take that extra water out. And the reason I don't do that on a cylinder is if I try to put my hand in there and it's a narrow cylinder, I'm going to get all kinds of spirals and irregularities from my hand forcing itself down there. All right, so this is where I'm going to use the hair dryer. And I want to, uh, as I'm throwing the piece, you can do this without a hair dryer or without any kind of heat. But because I'm taking my time talking about this, it's getting softer and softer as it's exposed to more and more water. Just dig this through here. So I'm going to dry this at the weakest point. I'm going to give this some shape, and this is especially true for bottles when I really want a nice bulbous form. This is going to be a, a, a vase, and I'm going to give it a little bit of shape, but not a lot. But I still want it to be strong right here. So it's going to support all the work that I'm going to be doing up here. So it's going to be loud, but um, I'll talk a little louder so you can hear me. So I like to really, as I'm doing this, kind of take my time and I'm going to just give it a little more shape and then I'm going to focus on the shape on the inside. From this point, that's really where your focus should be, what's happening on the inside. It doesn't matter what the outside shape is, you can always trim that later, but it, you can't trim the inside, all right? So here we go, just a little bit of shape. Right up to the same line. All right, so now, I'm going to use my flexible rib, and I'm going to start up here, and I want to establish the shoulder that I want for my vase. It's, again, it's really helpful to sketch out the shape that you're trying to achieve, so that you, you know what you're going for. And this is one of the dangers of using a rib with a square corner. You can see it's already kind of made a mark there. You really want to try to avoid that. So you're going to heal that. Now I want to push the form. I've got the basic form. I'm going to use on the inside, I'm going to use a wooden rib. And what I like to do with the wooden rib is I put the small end of the rib down into the corner. And then I rock it out and then blend it into the side. And I'm going to go right up to this exaggerate this right here and then we'll come in and work with this. Put this in like so. And you're going to just watch what happens on the side there.
Alright, so if you look at the inside, it's got kind of a square corner and then it comes up and it's got some form. So I'm going to go down, clear down to the bottom and try to, to uh, straighten that line out. You see the little bump there? And I just blend that into the side. So now, I want to exaggerate the shoulder. So I'm going to just put this fat side in, and I'm not just pushing out, I'm lifting as well. So watch what happens here. I'm going to change my heat from down here, up to where I'm working. Okay, so a lot of those little lines you can take care of with a flexible rib, and I like to use the round side now. And what you want to do is bend the rib into the contour that you're looking for, and then you push the clay out to the rib instead of pushing the rib up against the clay. When you do that, you flatten the surface. So I'm just going to put this out here and lift the clay into that curve. So I'm going to use the corner now. Alright, so that's uh, good enough. You can always trim some of those irregularities out later. Now we can stop using that. It's uh, a little bit... It's not leather hard, but it's, uh, it's getting drier. If we look at the inside, I need to push... well. If I were going to be doing a bottle, I'd push it a little bit more, but since this is a vase, it's going to be able to, the shape is going to come down to the uh, wheel head like so instead of rounded. So I'm going to just uh, stabilize the shoulder. Do that with a little torch. And I just want to really set this so that as I'm working on this top part, this isn't going to slump or bend or on me. Okay. So now it's it's not uh, it's just warm, so it's not uh, leather hard or anything. Then we've got our slip bucket, and I'm gonna brush some slip on where I'm working. And then what I want to do here is I want to fold this top in. And so I've got my fingers on the inside, my thumb is out here pushing this clay in. I'm redirecting the wall so that I can come in here and either collar it or push it into shape. And I think I'll probably end up uh, pulling it into shape. This corner right here that I just set, this is really a weak spot. And we discovered that in class last week and uh, somebody's piece um, collapsed. So we had to hang it upside down to bring it back to life. So you wanna just pull over that corner just to strengthen that a little bit. And then if you wanted to collar this, we could collar this. Now this is going to be a vase. I don't wanna close it, but I wanna bring it in first. And I wanna to try to leave this rim thick. I don't want a, a really super thin, rim on this. So now we've got our clay redirected, was flared out. Now I can uh, make the um, top of the vase. I'm going to pull up against a rib. This is compressing the clay and also shaping a little bit. All right, now that is the weak, that was the weak spot. Now we've strengthened it compressed it. 
Now I'm going to make the top. All right, so you can just pull this. This is clay, because I wasn't pulling it, I was pushing it into shape. So I wasn't thinning it. Um, I have a, plenty of clay up here to pull into the top of the base. All right, so depending on what form you're going after, uh, I'm going to flare this a little bit more. It's it's easy to get a base top that is too wide, flared out too much, but uh, just kind of watch it as you're working on it. What I like to do is say, all right, I'm going to go in so far. This is the opening on the inside. And then I'm going to open the vase. So from this point, I create the top of the vase. All right, so that really is all you need to do. I personally like the body to have its own voice. So what I do is I take this little square part of the rib and I'm supporting the, the wall on the inside and I'm just pushing this down just past my finger And that establishes a voice for the top there. And then I like to take one of these ribs and decide which contour I like the best. And so you can see that would be one that would be nice for top of the vase. So I just put it right in there and push it over the rib. And then you get a nice, smooth contour there. Um, you'll notice the, <clears throat> the top is a little bit, or the, skirt. <clears throat> excuse me, the edge is a little thicker. And I, I really like that on my vases. You can design your own style. You can make it nice and sharp if you want, but I like the way it works with the glaze if it's nice and round. So I'm gonna take my chamois, which, this is a real chamois, so for people who want to be kind to animals and not use animal skin, you can use plastic or, um, I think plastic works about the best. And then I'm going to take the same chamois and go over this inside surface. A lot of people don't really think about this, but those throwing rings are really prevalent there. So I just take my chamois and smooth all those out. All right, so that is the base. So what I'll do is you can see this has um, that same issue where there was clay on the inside that when I pushed this into form, uh, it redistributed some of that extra clay to the outside. So I will use my hair dryer to dry that a little bit and I'll take a trimming tool and I can actually like using a straight edge <clears throat> I follow that line from the outside no that didn't work One of the reasons I like trimming right side up is I can look inside and say, oh yeah, that's, that needs a little trimming there. So I can see this really needs a, a little play off here. So I'll trim some of this clay away later once this is leather hard. But that's that's the idea. We want to just do a base shape. And one of the mistakes I made during class is I took it one step further. I turned it upside down. And instead of trimming the clay away, I used that clay that was there to 
elongate the form, but we're just going to focus on this. The idea is reserving enough clay for the bell of the vase, um, which is the exact same thing you're going to do when you're reserving clay for the neck. All right, so that is the demonstration. We'll see you Monday evening. Class uh, starts at 6, but the classroom will open at 5, so you can take the time from 5 to 6 to finish up what you were doing last week and prepare for the uh, that evening's uh, session. Uh, the demonstration will start at 6 o'clock, so we will see you then. Thank you.